Thanks. Let me introduce you to someone who had a clear vision in life, who had clear goals, who wanted to make an impact in life. That's right. I'm talking about myself about seven years ago, when I had just finished high school. And it's quite obvious that I was at a great place in my life. I knew what I wanted to achieve within the next few years, and I had good grades in school. I was basically good at anything I was doing. Sounds like a remarkable guy, right? Unfortunately, that's really not true. It's more like the opposite was true. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was at best average at most things, and my core competencies were partying, chilling, and I was trying to be a cool guy. So, to be honest, all this didn't make me happy. I felt empty, I felt shallow, and most of the time I felt pretty miserable. It slowly changed when I started studying in South Africa, and at the same time I started reflecting on my life. Who did I want to be? What did I want to do with my life? Fast forward three years. Now, here you can see me with my dad, and I just graduated with a Bachelor of Science cum laude. Fast forward another two years. Now, this was taken about a week ago on the Harvard campus in Cambridge, where I'm currently doing research. And I can honestly say that today, I'm actually pretty happy. So what happened in between here? How did I get from this guy all the way over there? Before I can answer this, I need to talk about a topic that might seem very unrelated at the beginning, but we will get back to this. The topic of habits. Now, we humans are without a doubt creatures of habit. Wendy Wood is a researcher from the University of Southern California, and she found that 40 to 45 percent of our daily behaviors are habits. I mean, that's a lot. That means almost half of everything you do every day is actually a habit. Let me give you some examples. The time you get up it might be early in the mornings. For me, it's very early. That's a habit that you have. Computer games. My habit used to be I would come home from high school and I would play computer games right away. Horrible habit, but I had that. Cell phones. How often do you take out your cell phone, check messages, notifications? A horrible habit. Everyone has it. And we have more, driving a car. It might not seem like a habit, but we're only capable of driving as we do, because it has become a habit to us. And there are many more. Eating fast food is a super unhealthy habit. So many people have it. Exercising two, three, four, five times a week, one of the best habits you could imagine. And there are many more. It took me just a few hours to come up with a lot of examples. But you might ask yourself, what do all those behaviors have in common? How can I talk about habits and name all those behaviors? Well, habits are, by definition, automated behaviors that we repeat over and over again, always in the same context or environment, and that run in our subconscious mind. What I mean by that is you're not really consciously aware of it anymore. You've done it so many times that you don't have to pay attention to the behavior. Your mind is wandering, you're thinking of the past, you're planning into the future, but you're not really there. Let me give you an example, like driving a car. It has probably happened to you that you were driving somewhere, you would arrive and you couldn't even remember how you exactly you got there. It's because driving has become so habitual to us. Habits are usually triggered by some form of a cue. That's like a person you run into on a regular basis. It's an environment that you are in very often. And they are rewarded at the end. That could be a piece of chocolate, taking a small break, could be basically anything, as long as there is dopamine released in the brain. It's a little chemical, it's a neurotransmitter that signals the brain, oh, this is pleasure, this is reward, we like this. For example, the cell phones. Every time you get a message or a notification, a little bit of dopamine is released in the brain. That's like companies like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, they program their software, so dopamine is released in the brain. That's because that's why cell phones are so habitual to us. We put this together and we get the so-called habit loop. A cue triggers a behavior, behavior carried out, rewarded in the end, dopamine released. Because of that reward and dopamine, 
we do it again the next time the queue comes around. That's the habit loop, and we go through this many, many times, and we have many habits, and in the background, all our habits run through this loop over and over again. So let me give you a real-life example. Make it a little more descriptive and lively. An example from my life. When I got asked to give this talk, I was at the same time writing my master thesis, then I was researching in Harvard, and I was working part-time for a startup company. I was juggling with a lot of tasks, and I had to be really productive when I was working. There were so many distractions out there, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. So what I needed was a behavior of working focused. Now I needed a cue. I found an app on my phone called the Forest app. You plant a little seed on this app, and when you don't check your phone for a set amount of time, you plant a tree on your phone. So my cue would be, put my phone on flight mode and work focused. Plant a little tree. Now in the end, I would actually grow a whole forest at the end of the day. I would have seven, eight, ten trees. I called the whole thing my new deep work habit. And it worked perfectly. Well, I'm standing here and I hope I'm doing a fairly all right job. Okay, so by going through this habit so many times for several weeks, I was actually changing certain mechanisms and structures in my brain. And to make this talk a little more scientific, I think we should actually look at the human brain. Now, this is the human brain. And you can see it's fairly complex. And if I was going to tell you that about here there is some change occurring when you're doing something over and over again, it probably wouldn't really help. So what I did was I simplified the whole thing just a little bit, and I drew a sketch of my brain. Now, that's my brain. Um, I think it's fairly simple now. And after going through the deep work habit, let's say for one or two weeks, this is what you would see. You would see a network of neurons that start being connected together. And you can see that they are connected by pretty weak connections at the beginning. Now, after several weeks of me repeating this behavior over and over again, you would see that the connections are slowly getting thicker and stronger. Now, after four, five, six weeks of me repeating this behavior, seven, eight, ten times every single day, this would happen. The connections would even get stronger. There would be a layer of fat wrapped around it, which is called myelin. Now, you might wonder, what does that mean? How does that help me? Why does my brain do this? Well, you need to understand, our brains are energy consumers. They eat energy. The human brain weighs 2% of our body weight, but it consumes 20% of our whole energy supply. And to make this consumption as efficient as possible, our brain makes very important behaviors cost very little energy, meaning the thicker the connections between neurons, the less energy is needed to perform a behavior and to activate the neurons. In this case, my brain has realized that my deep work habit was really important. It needed to be repeated so many times, meaning we shouldn't invest a lot of energy to go through the behavior. Now let's go back to the real human brain. It has almost 100 billion neurons. They are connected by tens of trillions of connections. It's vastly complex. But despite this complexity, the simple principle I just described to you still applies. Whatever your daily behaviors are, whatever you repeat over and over again, that's what the brain decides is important. Repetition is what the brain decides is important. And that's crucial, so let me be very clear here. It doesn't matter if it's something that's good for you, like exercising, or whether it's something that's bad for you, like smoking, or whether it's something that's just needed, like driving a car. Whenever there's a lot of repetition and dopamine released in the brain, the brain decides oh, this is pretty important, we will need this. The very, very famous psychologist William James said more than 100 years ago, make your nervous system your ally instead of your enemy. And he was talking about exactly this, about this problem. So how do we do this? How can we make our brains our allies and don't let it become our enemies? It's definitely not easy, but I think we can make it simple. 
And the first piece of advice I want to give you is to be aware. And to explain what I mean by that, I'm actually going to play you a little, a little clip from a podcast that I listened to recently. And it's called the Finding Mastery podcast. And the guest is Dr. Judson Brewer, a psychologist from Yale University who studies addiction and how to use mindfulness training to treat addiction. And addiction is actually nothing else than a very strong overexpression of a behavior that turns into something negative. Let's listen. So if we can see those processes in action, this is where awareness comes in, we can learn to change them. If we can't see them, like you say, we're dead in the water. So I think awareness is the basis for both learning good habits, or quote unquote good habits, but also letting go of habits that don't help us. And Absolutely crucial, what Judson says here. You have to see what you do every day. You gotta observe, you gotta be honest with yourself. Take out a piece of paper and a pen whenever and just write down for one week everything you do. And be honest with yourself. Be very detailed about the small behaviors that you have. And then look at the list and be like, do I want to be that person? If that's what I want to do every day? And if that's not the case, if you would like to change something on it, my second piece of advice is go small steps. Small steps will let you achieve big things. It will maybe take a little longer, but it's much more likely that you will keep moving. The motto that we already talked about is just getting 1% better each day. So be consistent. Start by reading for five minutes a day a difficult book. Meditate three minutes a day. But keep going, keep doing it for one week, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. It will get more eventually. At the beginning, a new behavior will definitely feel like, oh, I really hate this behavior. I really don't want to do this. Eventually, it will be something like, okay, I can tolerate it. I can probably do this. And eventually, it will feel like, okay, I actually miss this when I don't do it. And that's the point you want to get to. That's when you have formed a new habit. So let's talk about four questions that I really wanted to address in my talk today to you, all of you guys. The first one was, what are habits? Well, they are automated behaviors that we repeat over and over again in the same environment and that run in our subconscious minds. They are triggered by a cue and they are rewarded by some form of dopamine-releasing reward. Why did I want to talk about habits and why do I think that there is a problem with habits? Well, 40 to 45% of our daily lives that should say it all. But the problem actually is that our brain can't differentiate between what's good for you, what's bad for you, and what's just neutral. The brain just says, oh, repetition, oh, dopamine, this is probably very important, we should do this over and over again. That's not how it is, though. Smoking or drinking a lot? No, 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 can't be good. How can we solve this? I think awareness is the key to so many things. Johannes just talked about it, embodied cognition, awareness. What do you do every day? What are your behaviors really? The small things that you don't, that you're not aware anymore because they are so subconscious. So be aware, and if you want to change something, take very small steps. Something that might seem tiny in a day will turn into something bigger. And real change does take time. So be patient and be consistent. And where can solving all this actually get us? How powerful are habits? Okay, well, we've been here before, and now we're back here. Changing my habits has not only changed what I do every single day, it has played a big part in who I am today. So my change of habits has completely changed the course of my life, and it has changed what I thought my boundaries, what I thought I was capable of. But I'm not standing up here today to tell you you need this habit or this habit to achieve something in life or to become the person that you want to be, because that differs from every single one of you. But I am standing here today to tell you that you have to seek and you have to cultivate those habits that are good for you, the ones that get you closer to your goals, closer to who you want to be. And be very, very careful 
with the habits that are very bad for you, the ones that take you further away from the person that you want to be and from your goals. Your brain cannot differentiate between them. So habits shape who you are. Habits shape what you will very likely keep on doing in the future. So ask yourself, what bad habits do you have? And what good habits do you have? What small step can you take today to change who you are? So let me leave you with the words of a wise man. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Thank you. Thank you.